What's up guys and good morning. It is 8:20, 2 days post marathon, so I'm not going to be running a ton this week. I know some of you guys like to get out there and hammer the day after marathons. I like doing that sometimes too, but I promised myself, I made the commitment 3 days at least. No running, little mental reset, physical reset, and then we'll get back out there Thursday, Friday, Saturday maybe and start doing some jogs, some first run reviews. So, until then, I wanted to highlight some of the best running shoes that I use for walking. I'm going to be doing a lot of walking this week. I also asked you guys last week, is this a video you'd be interested in seeing when I did the Max Cushion Shoe Roundup, highlighting some great shoes like the 1080 V13, and a lot of you were interested. So today, I'm going to go through all of these shoes. You can see some of them have tons of wear and tear, and look really beat into the ground because these are the shoes that I actually use to walk and to do errands and to do everyday life stuff. So five favorites here. I'm also going to pull out a few more that Charlie uses. So she likes slightly different shoes than I have, but these are my five favorites. Everything that you're going to see here is comfortable. It's got support. It's got the right amount of cushion and there is no weird technology that makes a shoe awkward to walk in. So with that, let's get into it. All right guys, so first up here, we have the New Balance 1080 V13. Now this is a shoe that I highlighted last week in the best max cushion shoe video. So look at this, it has the New Balance Fresh Foam. This is one of the softest foams out there. I did a test with a durometer, so it's a tool that measures how soft a foam is. And this came in around the 30 mark, so that goes from zero is a pillow, 100 is a brick. This is a really soft foam. Firm foams are typically around 50 for context. So if you want something very soft, very comfortable to walk in, New Balance 1080 V13 would be it. Now I'm not highlighting these in any specific order other than the order that I dropped them on the banister out here. So this would be the softest one. The good thing about a lot of the running shoes these days and the way they're engineering them is that even though this is really soft, if you need a little bit of support, this has still got it. So it's not a stability shoe. If you're maybe an older runner or walker and you need a little bit more support for your feet and ankles, this would not be the shoe. I will highlight a different shoe that has a little bit more support than this. None of the shoes I brought out here today though are traditional stability shoes, but the engineering that they do to make it more stable is giving it a wider base. So this does have a really nice wider base, very soft foam, but because you get more width, you're going to have a little bit more of a planted feel as you're trotting around town. And then if you look at the upper on this, I mean, the padding on this is just marvelous. It is buttery, soft, and smooth from the tongue to the heel counter here to everything that you're getting up around the sides. Now, the one downside in terms of the performance out there and think about walking performance, not running performance, is I did have a runner here on the channel mention that the upper could get a little bit warm in the summer. So if you take a look at this material, it's almost like a blanket your grandmother knit for you back in the day. So if you are looking for a shoe for summer walking, that is something to be mindful of. This might not have the most breathable upper, but overall very comfortable shoe. I actually went half the size up on this. You don't need to do that with the New Balance shoes, but for walking, sometimes I just like a roomier fit and for slower jogging, which is how I mainly use the shoe. So because this is a running shoe channel, I'll tell you how I use the shoe for running. Lots of relaxed miles. I have 300 miles on this thing. No pace work whatsoever, which is something that I'm going to be doing a little bit more of my next training block, guys. If you're a frequent follower of this channel, we're going to be hammering some fun workouts as we get into the spring and summer. But this is not the shoe for hammering workouts. None of the shoes I brought out here are really my top choice for speed workouts, but this is probably the least versatile shoe of everything that we have out here today. So if you want a shoe strictly for walking, for spending a long time on your feet, that is very soft. That would be this guy. If you've tried Hoka and you weren't impressed by how those perform, because I know a lot of people go to Hoka expecting this feeling, but the fresh foam here is a lot softer than any of that foam that you're going to get from the Hoka line. So this would be that shoe. If you don't want something super soft, don't get this. This is actually not my top pick for a supportive standing walking shoe. I'll highlight that in a few minutes, but it is my top pick for something super soft. So New Balance 1080 V13, $165. If you are going to pick this up, I should mention, please use my links to Running Warehouse. I'll put them all in the description below. 
for the shoes that are available on Running Warehouse. Doing that helps support the channel. So appreciate that. Now I'll tie it the next one here. So coming up, look at this guy on Cloud Monster. If anybody out there has a Cloud Monster that is more beat down than mine, please send a picture to my email. You want it at supple.io. I think I might have the most beat down Cloud Monster. If you can send me a picture of a pod that's more compressed than my heel pod here, <laughs> I'll be really impressed. So this is the On Cloud Monster. On is a Swiss brand that makes running shoes that have these gigantic holes in the midsole. And for some time, people thought that this was just a gimmick, but it is not a gimmick. This is a nice, comfortable shoe. And the main feature of the shoe, if you look at it, yes, you see these gigantic pods, but what really makes this a fun shoe is not the pods, but this rolling platform here this rocker on the bottom and so when you walk in the shoe it just gently pushes you along you do get some nice compression so that's an interesting feeling some squish and then release from those pods and then it just tips you forward so that's a pretty cool feeling it's not as soft as the 1080 v13 the upper is also not as padded so this is not going to be the ultimate comfort shoe however when i'm thinking about my ideal walking shoe Again, not the New Balance 1080 V13 because it's a little bit soft for me. I did want to highlight that for you guys, though, because I know a lot of you guys do like that super soft feeling. But something like this is the sweet spot. A little bit firmer, a little bit more structured. It's going to have a little bit more inherent stability. It's not, I don't think it's even as wide as the 1080. Let's check. Yeah, 1080 is a bit wider, but this firmer, slightly firmer foam, they call it Helion. It's an EVA foam, which is the standard foam that you see in running shoes and a lot of walking shoes. This foam is going to give the shoe a little bit more structure. Now, if we're thinking about running performance of this guy, which is important, I like this shoe for everyday miles. I've taken it up to two hour long runs in my Charlotte 2022 training block. And it's a fun shoe. It is on the more expensive side, and I should mention they're on to the Cloud Monster 2 now, which is a revised version of this, but very similar. I don't have it out here. I'm actually not, I don't think I'm going to plan on testing it just because it is so similar to the Cloud Monster 1. And I have the Cloud Monster Hyper, which is the elevated version of this with more of a racing foam in the forefoot. And that's probably a little bit of overkill for what you need for walking because it's $220. But Cloud Monster, Cloud Monster 2 are those standard everyday running shoes. You pay a little bit extra for these guys because look at this, the brand symbol there, that on light switch. That's what you're paying for. You're paying for the brand cachet with that extra $20 to $40 comparing this to some of the other standard everyday running shoes. But if you like the design of it, and I do, and I don't judge people who buy shoes based on design, I would never three, four years ago, five years ago before I got into running, I would never buy a shoe based on performance alone. And I still unless I'm testing a shoe, would never buy it based on performance alone. Looks are important to me. And all the shoes out here, I picked the colorways because I liked how they looked the best out of all the options. So that is important to me. We do not judge for swag on this channel. Matter of fact, we give you respect if you buy shoes for swag on this channel. And I know the people, there he goes, just on his rant, freestyling again. What is this, Hot 97? No, but this is a great shoe. I think this is actually, this is the Air Max of the 2020s. This is a take that I've been thinking about for a while now. Guys, let me know what you think of this. It comes in so many different colorways. You see people wearing it who are into streetwear, and it has the gimmicky I don't want to use the, the G word, but it has the unique midsole technology similar to the Nike Air Max. And we think of Nike as this established Titan. They were not always this established Titan in even the 90s. They were well, more well established than on, but not what they are today. So modern Air Max here on Cloud Monster. If you want something with swag, but also really comfortable for walking, that would be this. Last thing I'll say about it, upper on it is not nearly as padded and soft as the 1080 here, but you do get a nice wider toe box. Same thing with the New Balance. So the rest of the shoes that I'm gonna highlight here have a little bit more narrow toe boxes, but the On and New Balance are gonna be the best ones if you have a slightly wider foot. So On Cloud Monster 1 or 2, my picks if you want a good looking shoe with just enough support that you can do some running in as well. All right guys, next up here, and we are going swag back to back. We have the Tracksmith Elliott Runner. Now, this is probably the sharpest looking running shoe out there. And I am a former, I don't even know if I can say former, but I got a lot of J. Crew in my closet. That's all I'll, I'll say about that. And so this shoe is designed for people like me who like this clean New England Cape Cod aesthetic. I actually took the shoe 
up to Cape Cod last summer and walked around a ton with it. And if you see the shoe when it's fresh out of the box, it looks nothing like this. I completely destroyed it. It is a nice, pure, clean white. I actually have another pair of these that I'm just terrified to get any dirt on. Let me actually, I have a red pair. I'm going to pull those out so you can see what a clean colorway looks like because I think it's worth it. Hold on. Just listen to the birds while I'm gone. Actually, you think I can get this to land in a cool place so you can listen to the birds with a good view while I'm gone? Ah, that was okay. All right, guys, look at this thing. This is a clean shoe. So this is also the Trax Medellia Runner in this beautiful burgundy colorway, and it's got the gold accents. It's got this nice wrap ivory on the midsole, the Tracksmith logo on the back. I could go, oh, and look at that. Not a gum sole. It's got a gray sole. That's cool. The other version, let's see. This version, which is completely rocked, does have the gum sole. And look at that. That's how you can tell that I've beaten a shoe into the ground when it's even just used for walking. I've worn completely through this outsole. I wore this thing every day for almost a year, just kept the laces tied, slipped it on and off. And it is a super comfortable shoe for what you're getting here. So let me pull out this outsole because, or the insole, because this is the secret sauce of the Tracksmith Elliott Runner. So it does use a material called Piba, so a racing foam for the midsole, but the way Tracksmith engineered it is they made it a little bit firmer so that it's not that super squishy feeling because if you ever used a Nike uh, Vaporfly or an Alpha Fly or any racing shoe, the foams are really soft and they have to stabilize them with that carbon fiber plate. So to get around that, to still get the benefit of that nice pop and bounce back from the foam, but in a training shoe without the plate, what Tracksmith did is they made it firmer and then to give some step and feel, they give you a really thick insole here and they have some sort of a poem on the inside, which is cool too. Let's see if I can, can read this. This will really get them triggered. I'm going to read the whole poem. The curious go deeper. Let me, let me know. I'm going to workshop my poem reading voice. Ready guys? The curious go deeper, exploring time, distance, and speed testing their lungs legs and spirits they delight in discovery and revel there's a good word for you in hidden depths that's fire i can't say fire anymore let me think of another word someone said i said that's fire too much what a titanic work of literary mysticism i don't know sat words so the main draw of this shoe right it is on the expensive side two hundred dollars but what you're getting here is a really good looking shoe that performs amazingly for everyday runs. It's like a little bit more of a souped up Nike Pegasus or Saucony Ride, one of those standard everyday shoes. But of course, you got the awesome details and Tracksmith is a boutique Boston based running brand if you're not familiar with them. And you also get this midsole technology, which has been super durable for me. This foam just keeps going and going. I th That other pair that I have you see here, this still performs really well. It just looks like garbage because I've beaten it <laughs> into the ground. But if you want a sharp looking shoe that performs really well and that's comfortable it does have a narrower toe box here so that is one thing to note but if you are looking for what is that shoe that i can walk around in all day you know i work at mckinsey i'm flying down to dallas to consult on this oil project and i want to look good while we're passing through the baltimore airport this is the shoe that you want to get this is the best walking shoe and travel shoe for mckinsey consultants so yeah, that's a Tracksmith LA Runner. I also wanted to show you, hold on, just briefly, because I pulled this out while I was inside as well. This is the Cloud Monster Hyper. So if you compare the Hyper to the regular, you see that the Hyper here has that additional bit of foam right here. This is the racing foam, the p which is the same material that the entirety of the midsole is in the Tracksmith Elliott Runner. And that's what makes these two shoes a little bit more expensive. But I wouldn't recommend the Hyper just for walking unless you really just want the most expensive shoe out there for swag, you're gonna get 95% of the capabilities of, of this shoe with the regular Cloud Monster 1 or 2. And I will see, I'll dig up, see if I can dig up any sale links for the Cloud Monster 1 now that the 2 has dropped as well. So let us get into the next one. I'm gonna go clear that off. That was a little silly of me. I don't know why I did that. It's just completely embarrassing. He should have put the Super Blast on the chair out there. Why is it the Trax Medallia Runner? All right, guys, so next up here, we have the ASIC Super... No, I'm just kidding. ASIC Super Plus is a decent shoe for walking, but that's not what we have up here. Next up here, we have my favorite shoe 
for walking. My favorite all-time shoe for walking, for standing, for comfort it is the Brooks Ghost Max. And this was gifted to me, not by Brooks, but by Charlie for Christmas, which makes it even better. So the Ghost Max here, the sweet, I always want to say the sweet sauce, but the special sauce is... And that's the amazing thing about the shoe. It has no special sauce. There's nothing about this shoe that's particularly remarkable. Okay, this shoe, right? 1080, super soft. Cloud Monster, weird pods. Tracksmith Elliott Runner, it has the insole and the P-backs. This uses a standard training foam. It's an EVA blend. There's no plate in the midsole. There's no nitrogen infusion in the midsole to make it a super critical foam. It's not a crazy tall stack, but it just it nails everything and i think that's why i was thinking about sweet everything about this shoe is in the sweet spot fine tuned for what i want in a walking shoe so stack is up near 40 millimeters but it's not too tall and the foam is also not as soft as the 1080 so after some use after a few weeks of walking or about 50 miles of running the foam does soften up a ton once you get some of these little creases throughout the midsole that's when you know it will start to break in so that's the first thing right the foam is the perfect amount of softness you also have great width to this shoe and so let's compare it to the Cloud Monster, you even get a little bit of a wider base in the Cloud Monster. That's going to give it some good stability. So as you're walking out there, you don't have to stress your ankles or feet anymore trying to stay solid, which is why this is a great standing shoe. I used this actually yesterday for walking around Pullen Park in Raleigh. Really solid shoe for being on your feet all day. And the upper, again, not the widest, but it's not as narrow as some of the other uppers here. And let's take a look at this versus the Tracksmith Elliott Runner. You can see the Brooks does not as aggressively taper off here. You get a little bit more room. I know Brooks is historically known for a little bit of narrower toe boxes, but I would give this a shot if you have a narrower foot. This might be able, or a wider foot, this might be able to work for you. They also do carry this in wide. Now, the other thing that makes this great, so third thing, and most of these are about the midsole, the upper is okay. There's nothing fantastic about it, but Look at this, the way it rolls here. So it's got a lower drop. And what that means is the back of the shoe isn't a lot higher than the front of the shoe. That is something to note about the Elliott Runner here, right? You have a 10 millimeter difference and you can really see that the front of the shoe here is a lot lower than the back. That gives you a little bit more ground feel, a little bit more of that. I don't want to say barefoot, but that sensation where you can feel the ground and grip and you're working your feet a little bit more the old wives tale goes. But Brooks Ghost Max here with the lower drop and up near 40 millimeters in the heel, that means you're getting more cushion underneath the forefoot here. So a little bit more of a protective feeling ride and a little bit more of that elevated off the ground ride than something like the Cloud Monster or the Tracksmith Elliott Runner. But like the Cloud Monster, this thing just tips and rolls you along. You can see there's a nice gentle curve up here and makes it really smooth to walk around. So if I had to pick one of these shoes to walk in for the rest of my life, it would be the Brooks Ghost Max here. I also think we're going to see great durability out of it because Look at the bottom here. Look how much rubber you get. And I didn't show you all of these bottoms. Let's see. 1080 here. Decent amount of outsole. I have 300 miles on this and I've worn through it pretty good. Cloud Monster is just completely destroyed. Let's see <laughs> which one. Yeah, I think I actually might burst through one of these pods because I've taken off so much of the rubber <laughs> on this shoe here. And then Ghost Max is a little bit newer than those shoes. But you can see we get tons of rubber coverage. I am starting to wear through the foam in the forefoot a little bit which is interesting, but I think this is gonna be, even with that, a pretty durable shoe. And the other thing is, I know some of you guys are probably thinking, Brooks, uh, I don't know, that, that I could come with some better insights than that. I know some of you guys are not the biggest fan of Brooks. I'm actually a huge fan of how this shoe looks. And it also comes in all white colorways, two or three different monochromatic colorways. It comes in an all gray, an ivory and then a pure push a t white so this is a pretty fresh shoe if you got the right color aids i have this gray with the little black here and then the green accents i like this colorway too it's definitely in that what's the word norm core dad aesthetic but i am a dad and i'm rocking the camber so i guess i could fall into the norm core camp as well but this is a good looking shoe this one reminds me of i know we compared the cloud monster to the modern air max 
this is like a modern New Balance 990, right? It has that clean aesthetic. It's just supportive enough, just comfortable enough for walking and standing, but you can still run in it. And I know 990 is one of the most expensive, if not the most expensive shoe when it came out. But talking purely about the fashion and the, the aesthetic of the shoe, especially in this gray colorway, reminds me a lot of that 990 V5, V6, or even some of the older ones. So this is my top pick. If you need to stand on your feet for a long time throughout the day, if you're going on a family trip, use this guy. This is what I used for traveling down to the marathon and back, which means I was probably standing inside a gas station bathroom on it yesterday. And now my three fingers on my right hand, you can see are underneath the four foot rubber, which is pretty gross. But regardless, this is an amazing shoe. The most comfortable out here for being on your feet for a long time and my top pick for walking. Now, I wanna close it out here with one last option. This is the deal option. I always like to highlight one deal in these roundups, and it's also the simple no frills option. So this is the Nike Pegasus, and oh look, my no flop lace came undone. Let me retie that. So Nike Pegasus, the standard in everyday running, footwear and not necessarily standard as in it's the category leader or it's the most technology it's the shoe that a lot of runners associate with a daily trainer or a shoe that you strap up to run every day and so with that nike has also engineered the shoe to have some elements that make it a good shoe for errands for walking for gym use for everything else and so this is my top pick if one, you want to shoot under $100. So Ghost Max that we just highlighted, that comes in at $150. And the other three shoes are all above $150. $165 for the 1080, $180 for the Cloud Monster, $200 for the Elliott Runner. So this is the Peg 39. The 40 is the same thing. It's just got a revised upper. And the 41 is coming out soon. So the 40 you can find on sale for under $100 right now. And you can almost always find a Pegasus on sale for under $100. Now the foam in here, it isn't anything that's gonna blow you away. It's not as soft on step in as the Elliott Runner. It doesn't give you that compression like the Cloud Monster. It doesn't give you that super soft feeling like the 1080, but it's just a nice amount of slight bounce and pep. And so there is a zoom air unit up in the forefoot or a little air pod down here. I don't feel much of it when running or walking, but this is the shoe that I put on when I just want something simple to walk around and do errands. And it does have a decent degree of comfort. So nice padding up around the back here, padding on the tongue and upper overall is very comfortable up in the back here, good lockdown for the heel and nice and breathable up here in the forefoot. Also, look at this. This is a super clean colorway. I hope they come with something like this for the 41. I have not been impressed at the leaks I'm seeing. I actually think this is the best Pegasus colorway of the last two generations. And I was able to snag this one for under hundred bucks. So this is a shoe that's always on sale, super reliable, tons of rubber on the bottom. Again, I've had this shoe for, I don't know, a year and a half, put a hundred plus miles on it running, tons of walking and travel use, and it's still in really good shape. This is my default or was my default travel shoe before I got the Brooks Ghost Max. So that will probably slot in next time I'm flying up to New York. I'll probably take the Ghost Max, but sometimes I'll take this guy. So also a great shoe if you are traveling around. Maybe you're a consultant, but you don't work for McKinsey. Then I'll go for the Nike Pegasus here. Now for running, this is a really versatile shoe. I've used it for everything from jogs to faster 10 mile runs where I'm pushing the pace a little bit toward my marathon pace. Really reliable shoe, nice pep to it. It's not the most cushioned and protective. So I did want to bring out, and this isn't going on my favorites list yet because it's a new one, but I did want to bring out another Nike shoe that might be a better option for walking and jogging if you want something a little bit more cushion than this. So hold on. So that other shoe would be Nike Invincible 3 here. This is one of the newest shoes to come into the lab. That's what someone called it recently. They said, I can't wait to see the Saucony Endorphin Elite in your lab. So I guess that's what we're calling it now. This is one of the new shoes to come into the lab and it uses, we were talking about those soft, squishy race day foams earlier. It uses Nike's race day foam. It's called Zoom X and it is very soft. And it also has that same 10 millimeter drop as the Elliott Runner and Pegasus. So puts you a little bit more up on your toes. So if you want something super pillowy soft, very similar to the 1080 and the step in feel of this was really similar to the New Balance 1080, I would go with the Nike. Of course, this has a little bit more of that ostentatious swag. I don't know if we can, if that's the right way to say it, but it's got a little bit more of that, that street wear flair a little bit than the New Balance here. It really depends on your aesthetic, right? New Balance is more of that clean, 
classic muted aesthetic nike comes with some heat they got the safety tape here safety vest tape here on the back but both of these shoes are really comfortable pretty similar you might get a little bit better durability from the foam out of the 1080 but the outsole is an absolute tank on these nike shoes i've taken some of my nike shoes 100 200 miles and seen barely anywhere this one should be pretty similar too so this is an alternate option to the pegasus if you want a little bit more of a cushion shoe all right guys so we are well beyond five five favorites that i normally highlight but the core five were 1080 cloud monster elliot runner ghost max and pegasus but i do want to highlight two bonus ones so first one is topo atmos and as i said i'm not going to put any shoes into this favorite list unless they have been supwell certified and look at how charlie this is charlie's pair has used this shoe she has really put some good walking miles in this thing and put it through the paces so she i have not tested the shoe actually this is charlie's shoe that she's been testing from topo she says it is the softest shoe that she has ever worn and the most comfortable shoe she's ever worn so she tried my 1080s on and she said it was a little bit this is a little bit softer than 1080 the only foam that came close to the softness of this for her was the new balance fuel cell foam and the sc trainer v2 so if you again want that super soft feel but maybe a little bit more of that rocker also a wider toe box this has a very wide toe box that's the benefit of the topo shoes then i would go with the topo atmos here so i like highlighting some of these newer challenger brands on the channel topo is a brand that offers lower drop shoes so not as big of an offset difference in height between the back and the front that gives you a ton of cushion in the front of the shoe you also get that wider toe box a little bit of a weird thing with the topo atmos though and the topo shoes in general even though they have the anatomical fit with the wider toe box the midfoot tends to be a little bit snug so that is something charlie noted with the shoe a little bit of a snugger midfoot but one of the softest underfoot feel shoes and nice wider base not super stable even with that wider base because it is a very soft foam so if you need a little bit of a more stable shoe but want that soft feel i would maybe go to the ghost max you still get a decent amount of that sinking soft cushion but it's not as soft as the 1080 or this so this is the pick for wider toe box very soft feel with lower drop now final shoe i wanted to highlight one that i've been testing recently craft pacer another bonus pick for you guys another challenger brand in the running shoe space so this one is positioned by craft as their everyday running shoe maybe a little bit of a faster peppier shoe they are saying it's supposed to be super soft that has not been my experience so far i also did do the durometer tool test and this came in at around a 40 compared to the 30 low 30s that the fresh one was at so again the data and the feel are saying it's not a super soft shoe however it is a nice wider shoe so let's compare it to the 1080 you can see we get a lot more width on the pacer here and the upper is also a little bit roomier than some of the other uppers both in volume and in length so what i liked about the shoe is that it had almost a boot feel to it where you got this nice coddled feeling when you put your foot in it you get cradled by the sidewalls that's the word i've been looking for you get cradled by the sidewalls here and also the upper raises up a little bit more to give you that chuck a boot feel and then it looks pretty clean here the logo almost looks like that barefoot company shoe logo but it is not it is a craft shoe so i'm still testing this guy but it's been a pretty comfortable walking shoe so far not super soft but the main element of comfort is how the upper gives me a little bit more room and if your feet are a little bit banged up sometimes that's nice to have a roomier fit with a nice foam underneath here in terms of the running capabilities of the shoe i like this one a little bit more for faster running but walking is really where i'm finding the sweet spot and another one that i just leave untied slip on and off take to the gym all that good stuff so there you have it guys those are the five favorites today and the little bonus get the new balance if you want softest in the game get the cloud monster if you want a little bit of a different feel a little bit more of a fun walking ride where you sink into it Elliot Runner is going to be that pick if you want something that's not super soft, but nice step in feel and looks really clean. I've put dozens of hours and dozens of miles walking in the shoe and it's nice and comfortable and supportive. 
Ghost Max, this is the default. If you don't know which one to pick, this is the best shoe for walking. Just get this, you will not regret it for walking. And then Pegasus, this is standard classic running shoe, gonna be really durable, good amount of support, not the most cushioned, but you can pick it up on a deal. And like the Ghost Max, you're probably not gonna regret getting the Pegasus to walk in unless you want something super cushioned, then I go for the Ghost Max or the 1080. So there you have it, guys. Those are the walking favorites of spring 2024 let me know all of your favorites in the comments below and also all of your questions thanks for watching and i'll be back tomorrow with another video one more thing this is the fourth episode of one more thing this is where i throw my thoughts at the end that i forgot to say in the middle so tracksmith elliot runner is also a solid shoe for running i felt like i kind of downplayed or didn't highlight enough its running capability so i did great everyday runs in it similar to Nike Pegasus and Ghost Max. And also I should say Ghost Max is a great shoe if you want something not necessarily super soft, but smoother and cushioned for everyday miles. But this guy here does have some nice pep into it. It does, it's not just a good looking shoe. I did some of my fastest workouts at the time in early 2023. And this guy ripping off some five minute pace, five flat repeats intervals about, I don't know, a hundred meter repeats, almost sprint work in it. And it performed really well for that. Also performed well for marathon pace work. So not just a good looking shoe for McKinsey consultants. This is a shoe that you'll have some great runs in. Again, not the most cushioned in the forefoot though. So if you're expecting a max cushioned experience, not going to be the Elliott Runner. That's going to be more so the Ghost Max or the 1080 or even the Cloud Monster is a little bit more cushioned than the Tracks with Elliott Runner here. Okay, I think that's it guys. I'm going to go inside so I can't talk anymore.